In this video, I take you behind the scenes of my Frankenstein box bill. This will be an American base versus Scar Audio production. So if you guys would like to know how I built this box and why I built this box, stick around. We got that and more coming right up. What is going on guys? It's the Budget Base Head. Welcome back to the channel. As stated previously, this will be an American Base versus Scar Audio production. It will be a competition between these two guys on the screen. You have the American Base XFL 12 by American Base, of course, coming in at 180 bucks. It has a max power rating of 3,000 watts, an RMS power rating of 1,500 watts, and a three inch voice core with dual two configuration. The Scar Audio VXF I picked up for 270 bucks. It has a max power rating of 3,000 watt, RMS power rating, a mirror image of the VXFL. Three inch voice call, dual two configuration. You guys requested a good one. But it's not about the subwoofers. This one is about the box build. And as you guys can see on the screen, the Frankenstein enclosure does have quite a few specs for you guys to pay attention to. But right now, what I'm gonna do is move on over here to, um, to my uh, SketchUp. This is where I 3D model all my enclosures, just to give you guys a closer view of what it is I do behind the scenes. Of course, any box build starts out on paper or in such a configuration as you see right here. I use a 3D modeling program because to me, to get everything in this environment before I actually spend money on cutting any, piece of, uh, or cutting any pieces of my wood, I would like to see what this thing look like first. So this is kind of like a safety net for me. If it looks good here, if it's if it uh if everything matches up here, then it will match up in the real world as well. So that's why I use SketchUp. If you guys have never heard about it, please go check it out. It's a pretty cool tool. But it's not just the SketchUp that you want to pay through uh pay attention through. Uh, pay attention to what you also want to pay attention to is the response curve of this so for this i use a tool called win isd pro this right here shows you the response of the two chambers that i am going to be incorporating within this build this is my 30 hertz chamber here in the blue this is it frequency response pretty flat from 30 throughout and this is my 60 hertz chamber that I have incorporated within this enclosure and I'm going to be explaining to you guys why I chose this style of enclosure in just a moment but first up once you get everything modeled up and you see your response curve now it's time to cut some wood I've gone ahead and created me a flat pack right here they have all the pieces that I'm going to need to join later as you guys can see I did do the due diligence and go ahead and did all my rounding over of each port where it need be. And right here is my internal bracing. You got the uh, 45s that's gonna go in the corner. I think I had a total of 10 of those guys. You see I got my graphs printed out from SketchUp there. And I also got my dowels to keep all my ports perfectly aligned as they should be, one, uh, 1 1.5 inches apart. Next up, what you guys are going to be seeing is a technique that I use. I'm going to be sharing this with you guys. Uh, SketchUp does have a mobile application. Once again, go check it out if you guys have never heard of it. And I always keep this as reference, even though I have the printouts. This is still a good reference point of what everything should look like once it's uh, all fitted together. And this is what it looks like on my uh, mobile application. And right now, once again, a little technique that I use, I'm gonna be sharing here with you guys. What I do is I take each piece of the, um, the, the build, whether it be the back wall, the front wall, the inner walls that makes up the, uh, the, the chambers, the ports, things of that nature, and I mark them. I not only mark them on the bottom piece that is supposed to be the base of the enclosure, but I also mark them on the top 
piece that's going to be the uh, of course the uh, the roof of the enclosure and the reason why I do this even though it's a bit more time consuming the reason that I do this is because in the end it gives you that reassurance that everything is going to get uh, going to get nailed and screwed and glued into its proper place right now what you guys are seeing is me using those dials as spacers and I'm going to be using them because I know that even though I just marked everything uh, on the back walls and things of that nature and use my measuring tape for the inner ports these port the port width is very very important so the dowels not only ensure uh, no flex in your ports but it also ensure that you got that perfect measurement all the way across so use those this is a good tip that I uh, picked up over uh, at EXO's channel he actually gave me this tip a few years ago I've been using it ever since so if you ain't heard of EXO, go check him out. He's a pretty smart guy. Next up is going to be centering my uh, my dowels. Like I said, the dowels are also uh, are mostly for bracing. So you want this. I wanted it center of each port wall that it was going to be be connected to. So an easy way of doing that is just using something that's a straight edge and just giving you an X and there you go right there in that center is where your dowel is going to go and this is if you want to center anything even if you're using like a uh, a circle jig to cut out you know uh, different um, different circles and stuff like that Just cutting out subwoofer uh, holes and stuff so what, what you see me doing right here is just once again um, getting my hole drill I always like to pre-drill my holes because uh, especially with this pine right here because it's easily to splinter if you guys look at that there's a lot of space in between the wood grains and if you just push a nail through there or a screw it can spread and crack something as small as this so I used uh, my drill to give me a pre-drill a pre-drill hole there and I just continue that with marking where I'm going to actually drill my hole in my uh, in my centerpiece right here Next up, I'm going to show you guys how how convenient pre-assembling your port walls would be. Look at that. How easy is that? You see how I did that? I went ahead and attached that one piece I just showed you guys. And then I glued and screwed this port piece together before I even uh, put it in there. And there is, the once again, the convenience of marking your spaces there. I went ahead and pre-drilled holes for all the screws that I'm going to be using to attach my uh, my port pieces. So just that, that reassurance, guys. Glue is really the strength of any box, but if you want to throw some nails in certain places, then do that. And I know that some of the woofers that I plan on putting in this thing in the future is going to have a lot of force. So I wanted to make sure those ports don't flex and they don't come loose from the base and roof. And once assembled, this is pretty much what it looks like. Glue, 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 guys. That's, that's pretty much the, uh, the secret to your enclosure. You want to make sure you use enough glue and make sure you round over these, uh, these ports anywhere and where in, in anywhere in your enclosure where air is going to be routed. Make sure you round that over. Some people would tell you it's not a necessity to do that, but trust me, it, it comes out a whole lot better. You can actually hear and feel the difference between a, an enclosure that has rounded ports and edges and, 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 and one that does not. I know because I've actually damaged a, uh, uh, an enclosure in the past, but I liked it so much, I rebuilt it. And, that, and the second time I rebuilt it, I used this, this round over method, and it was a complete difference, even though it was the same template. It sounded much better. And that just me showing you guys the 45s, very, very convenient. Those little things, not only do they help you route your air, they actually help with uh, strength as well. And this is going to be the 30, 30 hertz port, which is going to breathe into my 60 hertz port. And then this is going to breathe out into the environment, of course. So why did I decide to go with a build such as this? What I want you guys to understand about a six order bass reflex and the difference between it and a six order bandpass is that the bandpass actually gives you 
two frequencies in which you are going to be optimized at and pretty much it gives you that natural roll off of the upper and lower frequency band in this case the bass reflex doesn't do that because if you go back to the graph that I showed you guys earlier if you notice there is no clipping of this front wave right here it's only clip at the at the real wave because the real wave is pretty much the only thing that's being enclosed or housed so it's being clipped but the front wave is actually allowed to flow into infinity so why did I decide to build this other than a bandpass well I you know I only I wanted like bandpass features but I also wanted to be able to give you guys flex in the videos to be honest with you uh, a build such as this is okay but I would rather to be honest with you go with an actual bandpass build because the, the bandpass build actually gives you that that uh that 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 natural roll off you see this is a bandpass build the uh, upper frequency isn't as high as the other one was and it's clipped you see it gives you that natural roll off right here which is why i like it i don't have to mess around too much with my uh with the uh the the, the frequency band or tuning on the head deck or the amplifier itself because the enclosure is going to do all that work for you but when you're individually tuning your ports, you don't really get that. And that's okay because I know you guys like to see that flex, right? So I went ahead and went with this. And I do get the cone control that I'm looking for. So what do I mean by cone control? So one thing about WinIXD, it actually gives you the graph of what it looks like at these two different frequencies. So if I just turn off the 32 hertz band you guys was I mean 32 hertz frequency you guys will see at 60 hertz a subwoofer which is this this the enclosure was actually built for the VXF the red line shows its maximum excursion which is 25 uh, millimeters and I'm well below that at this tuning frequency of 60 hertz so at 60 hertz I'm only looking at about 13 millimeters peak at 60 hertz well, really not even that. If you guys look at this right here, um, well, it tells you at 60, you're looking at about 13 millimeters. So let's go and turn back on the 32 hertz one. And like I said, it's tuned at around 30, 30 hertz. You're only getting about 11 millimeters of peak at 30 hertz. So that's why I did this more so for cone control and to actually give you guys that flex you, that visual representation you guys like. But I didn't really mean to go too much into this. What I really want to share more so with you guys is the fact that I've already built this enclosure and I've already had it tested and I wanted to share some footage with you guys on what it looks like in action. So right now what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm pre-testing the um, the fitment of it. This is the American Bass XFL. Like I said, this is an American Bass versus Scar production, and the VXFL. I mean, the XFL is the star of the show right now. So I wanted to make sure that it fit, and I knew by it being oversized from the other subwoofers that if I if I uh, design it to fit it, that all the other ones would fit. So he fit it perfectly, and of course that means that the uh, the V uh, VXF would fit as well. So I just wanted to kind of bring that to you guys and let you know we got some videos coming up with these two guys bottling it out in this subwoofer enclosure. Next up is going to be the 100% glue coverage. How exactly do I do that? I know some of you guys already know this stuff, but hey, I just wanted to show you the method that I use. This, this, um, this I forget what they call this. This is a knife used by carpenters when they're uh, spreading their their uh, putty mixtures or wall uh, mud. They they use this stuff to repair sheetrock, and when they go in, they use this knife to spread everything evenly. Very makes the job very much easy when you're trying to get 100% glue coverage. And that's pretty much it. Uh, for the build right now what I'm just showing you guys is some flex and yeah this little guy man the VXF loves this enclosure I just gotta put it out there it loves this enclosure but I'm just gonna let you guys know I'm not gonna be giving you guys any sound demos today 
you know not not today that's coming up so stay tuned you guys wanted me to put the video out showing you guys this thing in action this is what it looks like plenty of port area is tuned exactly the way that uh the, the manufacturers wanted it this is a, like once again this is a six order base reflex port type is a vent this is a universal design i got three quarter inch mdf here du uh, dual baffle uh, speaker wise I'm using is 8 gauge internal volume is 3 cubic foot the number of loading chambers here is 1 as you guys can see but it does have 2 internal chambers as I showed you guys earlier tuned to 30 and 60 hertz it has a frequency response from 25 to around 70 hertz the sub with a hole cut out if you guys are wondering about that is 11.25 inches the maximum uh, depth of this guy is going to be 18 inches It's weighing approximately 85 pounds it's 17 and a half inches in height the width of it is 25 and a half inches the depth of it is 19.75 that's 19 uh, 19 uh, inches and three quarters and yeah i hope you guys stay tuned for uh the uh the, the upcoming demos between these two guys but what i am going to give you is a sneak peek at the uh, top score between these two guys when I metered them. And I want to know in the comments below, which of you, which of these two guys do you think actually put this score up? And keep in, keep in mind, guys, this is a trunk build, okay? I don't know if some of you guys know, but it's kind of hard uh, to get loud in a trunk, okay? SUVs, hatchbacks they do pretty well that's why most people build like walls and stuff and they usually get suvs to do a lot of competitions even with the no walls when they only go up to the headrest and stop a lot of times you see that in like uh hatchbacks and suvs things of that nature wagons to do a trunk and try to get loud in a trunk is very difficult unless you uh port through like a uh the seat the back seat or something like that like an armrest or something i see people do blow throughs but uh just a single box a single subwoofer in a in a less than four cubic foot enclosure very very hard to get loud but i want to share with you guys this uh this score and let me know in the comments which one of these subwoofers you guys think put up this number All right, so that's a 141.5. That's a 141.5 in the trunk. Single 12. Which one of those guys do you think did that? Do you think it was the VXL? Or do you guys think it uh, think it was the, uh, the XFL? Let me know in the comment sections below. And until next time, if you guys are into car audio, DIY builds, comparisons and competitions, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.